Good, good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy <coughs> to have uh, such a good opportunity to speak <coughs> all of you. <coughs> and uh, first of all, I'm afraid I'll be late a little minute. And uh, <coughs> uh, I heard that the uh, East Asia Research Program uh, just started, and uh <coughs> I hope it will succeed. And the first, uh, today I want to explain you about uh, the Japanese security policy and uh, uh, Japan-US alliance and uh, about uh, China. <coughs> and uh, uh, Dr. Sanjaya said, uh, as he said, that uh, now the India is the most popular country in Japan. Every country want to make a good relationship with the India, especially China, America, Japan. <coughs> uh, these countries invite uh, India to join the alliance. I don't know correctly about the reaction of India, <coughs> but uh, the reason why is, uh, of course, uh, uh, the alliance is important for these countries. <coughs> And uh, I recommend uh, India join the Japan and the U.S. and the U.S. alliance. The reason is the uh, <coughs> uh, economical system and the finance system and the trade system. All these systems is the same, India and the Japan and America. And the political system, of course, these three countries are the same, democratic country. And uh, if these three countries make a good relationship, I think um, we can make a very stable and safety uh, environment in this area. <coughs> and uh, it's uh, my hope. And uh, so, first of all, many of them know that Japan have passed the new security laws. I tell you about it. And uh, the new security laws, uh, it make possible the Japanese government can use uh, collective self-defense rights. And uh, so the Chinese government criticize it, but it is not uh, so uh, aggressive uh, or um, aggressive policy. And uh, first of all, if Japanese government want to use a collective self-defense right. The laws uh, decide three conditions. <coughs> three conditions, I tell you. The first is uh, the situation which threatens Japan's survival and pose a clear danger to fundamentally overturn people's right to life, uh, liberty, and pursue the happiness. And the second condition is there is no other appropriate means available to repel the attack and ensure Japan's survival and protect its people. The third condition is use of force to the minimum extent necessary. This is a very strict condition to use the corrective defense right. <coughs> and uh, Japanese government uh, thought when they use this corrective defense right. The first, they imagined the Korean Peninsula War. If North Korea attacked the South Korea, mm, then Korean Peninsula will be in chaos and the American army join the war and fight against North Korea. <coughs> I don't know what the Chinese government will do, but so American government asked Japan to support or to join. And if this situation uh, is enough for the, the three conditions, Japanese government can use the corrective self-defense right. It's the first case. But the <coughs> real aim to pass these 
laws is uh, the one important point is the Japan-U.S. alliance. To strengthen this alliance is very important. And the second is uh, the deterrence to the China. Japan-U.S. alliance becomes strong and uh, the new law permit the new military drills expand the contents of drills and expand the countries. Not only in America, we can drill with uh, Australia or South Korea or India or any other countries, if they agree. And uh, this action will be have a meaning of the deterrence to the China. So uh, it is very important for Japanese security to strengthen Japan-U.S. alliance and uh, uh, to make a deterrence. And the, so real aim is not to fight against uh, China or not to join the other countries war. To protect the war is the main aim. This is uh, Prime Minister Abe's words, not my words. <laughs> but uh, this is the uh, important aim. And uh, about these new laws, many Japanese people are against it, and many parties against it. And uh, just after the passing the laws, many Japanese newspapers did the public poll research. And more than 70% or about 80% of people are against it. The reason is this law is uh, inconstitutional, or uh, this law is a uh, war law. It means that the uh, Japanese government joined the new law, or ask the United States Army request to join the new war. So they criticize it. And uh, but. Uh, I think that these three conditions is very strict. And uh, I can't imagine what situation Japan can join the war or support the America. Is it, are there any enough conditions which Japan can use a corrective defense right? Mm. I think near future, <coughs> I can't imagine the such situation. So this law have a political meaning, not the military meaning. It is an important point, I think. <coughs> and uh, I want to explain you why so many Japanese people are against such roles. My view is it is uh, the most important point that Japanese people remember the last war. We lost about three million people. Three million people uh, died by the war, not only the soldiers. Many citizens were died by the American attack. And uh, after the end of the World War II, Japanese people believe that to abandon the war is the best for the peace. So the Japanese Constitution, Article 9, if you read straightly about the Article 9, it means Japanese government prohibited to have a military organization. Japanese government uh, prohibited to join the war. Japanese government prohibit to use the uh, weapons in other countries. Everything is prohibited. But after 10 uh, years, uh, Japanese government change the interpretation of the Constitution and uh, 
Now we have uh, self-defense forces. It is very strong. We don't say self-defense forces is a military organization. We say self-defense forces. But uh, from the viewpoint of foreign countries, it looks the military organization <coughs> and uh, strong enough. The number of soldiers is <coughs> uh, totally uh, uh, 0 0.22 million. And uh, the budget is every day uh, uh, 45 billion. It is a huge number and uh, very strong, I think. But even we have a self-defense forces, Japanese people believe Japan should not use a weapon. Japan should not join the war. It is a, a some kind of pacifism. And uh, <coughs> so many Japanese people think, why? we need the self-defense forces. So many people joined as a soldier. The many Japanese people think when the typhoon attack, the when the earthquake happened, self-defense force is very important to rescue or to rebuild the city, not to fight. So many people are against the new laws. But uh, <coughs> as I told you, the meaning of a uh, new law is uh, very political and uh, diplomatic. And so next I want to uh, tell you about the China. <coughs> uh, nowadays, Japan-China relation is very bad, something worse. For three or four years, Japanese Prime Minister couldn't visit Beijing. And the Chinese leader, of course, couldn't visit Tokyo. They meet only the third country at the multilateral meeting. And uh, 15 minutes or 10 minutes with the interpretation. And uh, at the same time, the South Korea and the Japan relation the worst. <coughs> the reason, most important reason is a, a territorial problem. Japan and China have a territorial problem. Very small island, Senkaku Island. This island, nobody lives. But uh, <coughs> it is a serious problem. And around the <coughs> Senkaku Island, the Chinese Coast Guard ship enter the territorial area very often, every week, three or four times, and the Japanese Coast Guard blocked it. And uh, it is a routine work for them. And uh, so, Japanese government think to make a deterrence with the uh, American army is very important. And the Chinese military organization uh, becoming uh, strong and strong and uh, modernized. And uh, the field of the action is spread every year. And uh, getting power, as you know, and so, Japan-U.S. alliance is very important for not only Japan, but for the America. So, the new law have a very important meaning. And uh, I think the current China or Chinese government uh, activity is very controversial. Not only the military problems, for example, economy or trade or international laws 
or anything else, energy program. I think it is a revival of Sinocentrism. More than uh, 150 years, the China was sleeping. They lost the power. And uh, during these periods, Japan invaded and killed many Chinese people, soldiers. And so, nowadays, they changed. They succeeded to become a, a powerful country and uh, economic growth. And uh, about 20 years ago, China was a very quiet and a gentle country. But now, they have changed drastically and challenging uh, existing order. Not only the East China Sea, the South China Sea is a most serious problem. And uh, my view, my view, the Chinese leader Xi Jinping succeeded to concentrate the power. He is a very strong leader, one of the most strongest leaders in the world now. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that uh, stabili stabilization of the power. I think the Chinese government is very unstable. And uh, many Chinese people have uh, complained about the Chinese government or communist parties. When I visit the, okay, when I visit the uh, Beijing University, many young students get the information, not from the newspaper or TV. They get information from the social network service. The, they know very much about the reality of the Chinese society or problems and uh, how to control the Chinese people. I think it is very difficult for Xi Jinping. But uh, uh, Japan-China relation and the Jap Japan-US relation and the US-China relation is very important. And uh, I think it looks becoming better near future. And uh, China think Japan, uh, China US relations are important and uh, the last summit meeting is successful. And uh, <coughs> near future, Japan and uh, China leaders will meet in this autumn. And so I hope um, this trend continue, but uh, I'm pessimistic. China will be continue the no, uh, South China Sea's problem. And so, to make a good situation of uh, East Asia, I think the role of India is very important. And uh, please join our alliance. That's my hope. Thank you very much.